Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how tire pressure, tire construction, and different road surfaces affect traction. This is something I've been researching and I found it pretty interesting, so I thought I'd share it with you. First, the main reason tires are filled with air is because when rubber flexes, it generates heat. The more rubber there is and the more it flexes, the more heat there is, and eventually the rubber gets soft and it starts to melt. That's why modern tires are usually filled with air because air can flex or compress without generating a lot of heat. I didn't know this, but apparently 18-wheelers didn't roll the highways in the U.S. until the late 1920s, and that's because there weren't any tires that could take them over 40 miles an hour. They just didn't exist and the local delivery trucks rode around on solid tires that had to be operated at stop-and-go speeds, otherwise the tires would literally melt. So less rubber and more air was the solution to less heat buildup. Modern tires are designed with a membrane made of layers or plies, and the outside of this membrane is covered in a wear-resistant rubber we call the tread. The inside of the membrane is covered in a low gas permeability rubber, and there's a retaining ring called the bead that holds the tire to the rim, creating an airtight seal. The air pressure inside the tire keeps the sidewall rigid enough to support the weight of the bike and the rider. And if the tire is radial, there's going to be steel wires running through the rubber for added support. I'm going to use this rubber ball to represent a tire, and I'm going to use the table to represent a road surface. Because the tire's membrane or structure is flexible and the air inside is compressible, when the tire is under load, the tread flattens and the area that makes contact with the riding surface is called the tire's footprint. The round tire flattens out when it enters the footprint and rounds back out as it leaves. Lower tire pressure creates a larger footprint, but the rubber has to bend and unbend more than it does with the higher air pressure, and the bending is what mainly generates heat. The tread patterns on a tire are made up of grooves, blocks, and snips, which allow for better traction and harder braking, but they also have an effect on overall handling. The tread pattern is largely designed for water evacuation, and it lets water flow through the grooves to help prevent hydroplaning in wet weather. The grooves also give you better acceleration and braking on other loose surfaces. Tires are made up of compounds, which are just different materials used to make the tire itself. And depending on the type of tire, the compounds can be either hard or soft. The harder compounds are typically more durable and support more weight, while the softer compounds are for performance and offer better traction. The softer the compound in a tire is, the higher the coefficient to friction is, so you get more traction out of the tire, but usually with a shorter lifespan. The softer compound tires just wear out quicker than the harder compound tires do. I'm pretty sure the tires on this bike are bias ply, and they do have good grip but the softer sidewall of a radial tire is gonna give you better traction than a bias ply when you're leaning in heavy on corners. And the tread wear of a radial is gonna be more even because the air pressure is distributed more effectively across the inside of the tire. Winter tires are made with a compound that's designed to stay soft in really low temperatures, and summer tires are designed to perform at high temperatures and high speeds. The summer tire is going to lose its performance in cold weather. If the grooves in the tire are near the same level as the contact patch, you should replace the tire, and you can check it with the tread wear indicator. There's usually one on the side of the tire. If the center of the tire is worn out and it's flatter than the sides of the tire, this is called a squared off tire and you need to get it replaced. If one side of the tire is worn down more than the other side, this is called a cupped or scalloped tire and it should also be replaced. The tire manufacture date is usually a four digit number printed on the side of the tire that tells the week and year the tire was made. Five years is the typical lifespan of a motorcycle tire, and it should be replaced after that. 
If your tires have cracks on the tread or sidewall, rubber peeling away, or other signs of damage, replace the tire as soon as you can and don't ride the bike until you get it fixed. The last thing I want to mention is road surfaces. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but the two main surfaces are concrete and asphalt. They both have their pros and cons, but overall concrete is not as grippy as asphalt is. It's very strong and it holds up well under heavy loads. That's why you see it used a lot on highways, but it can crack from freeze thaw cycles and this creates uneven road surfaces. Also, vehicle spills and chemicals don't absorb into concrete the same as they do asphalt. So oil spills are going to sit on the surface of concrete longer than they would an asphalt road. Asphalt provides better traction and skid resistance than concrete does, but it's not as strong. It breaks apart and starts to crumble under stress, leaving potholes and rutting. So in damaged areas like corners and intersections, it can feel like you're driving over loose gravel. Well, that's all I've got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead, click subscribe, and stay up to date with my latest videos. Well, thanks again, and have a wonderful day.